this Princess Jordan here. Like my mom's Queens of Queens page. <laughs> hey, BPU you a fool, just prop. Hey, I made it out. I made it out. They say I wouldn't make it. Guess who made it out? I made it out. I made it out. They say I wouldn't make it. Guess who made it out? I made it out. I made it out. They say I would make it, uh -huh. guess who made it out? Yeah, I made it out, made it out, I made it out. It out. They say I wouldn't make it, guess uh -huh. who made it out? It's Queen Maisha here of Queens of Queens Radio. This is Kings of Queens Discussion Group. So I posted something on Facebook yesterday, and so far it has over 126 comments and seven shares, and people are still commenting. So the topic is if a black person, excuse me, if a black person dates or marries a white person, does the black person still have a right to preach about building a strong black community? Online we have uh, Queen Janae, we have King Ajalon, and we have D. Dan Kamati. Can you guys please introduce yourselves? Hello, this is Queen Janae from Washington, D.C. I'm representing the Waker Foundation. That's www.waker, W-A-K-E-R, foundation.me. Um, you can reach me at 202-867-3200. And this is a great topic. I love you guys at Queens of Queens. You always bring the real. So I'm glad to be here again for another show. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Up next to Bath, the Dan Kamathi. I appreciate you having me on the panel once again. Thank you very much. And you welcome. This is King Ajala, lawyer after mine. Welcome everyone. Like, subscribe, follow, share, spread the word. This topic is a much needed discussion. I hope everyone in Wednesday and I. Uh, share this with other people in this city going on in our community. We're talking about building consciousness within the community. And we're going to see what this takes off. Thank you once again. Congratulations. So, I'm not going to even open this up with me talking about my views. I'm just going to go ahead and open it up to the floor and let you guys do your thing. All right. That sounds like a bit plain. This is um, Sister Janae here. Um, and my thoughts, I was just just thinking um, out loud. A lot of people have asked that question, you know, do you have a right in your spouse or the people you choose to be with or of a different race or color? Can you represent for black people? Um, it's, 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 it's hypocritical. At one, at one point, it's it's hypocritical for you need you to even adjust your mouth to say, I'm fighting for the rights of our black people, but I choose to live my life uh, and not support the black family. Because that's what being a revolutionary and a black revolutionary is all about, is supporting your own community and making things right for your own people and making life better for people of color who have been uh, overlooked and underlooked, underpaid, enslaved, and under white supremacy and imperialism. You know, ultimately they want to wipe out either either the white, the black woman first, or the black man. And if a, what what was what, what was what is looking like is they trying to eliminate both of us at the same time, but we not dying fast enough. You know, because the images of black men now they're emasculated. Black women images are loud mouth, ghetto, hood, red, unworthy, to be shaved, 
type in the beast. And then you're going to sit here and say you're going you, you a revolutionary or you for your people, but you choose to be with something that don't look like you. So that's very hypocritical to me, number one. Not that you just being a hypocrite. So how do you guys feel about that? That's just my take on it. D-Dan Kamati, King Ajalon. D-Dan Kamati, I'm, I'm in a hundred, I, I don't even think you could put a percentage on it, but I, I'm in agreement to the fullest in all that you said. Black trying to talk black, trying to talk black and sleep and white, that's a terrible combination, though, because if you so call for the black family and you speaking out Okay, black family, you need to get together, this, that, and other, but you couldn't find it in your heart to get a black man or even a black woman. It just don't add up, for real. It's, it's a contradiction, though. Like I say, that's just like that wildebeest trying to cross that body of water, and that damn crocodile just keep eating that wildebeest all the time. All the while, all the damn crocodiles not participating in the wildebeest getting ate up. But they are sitting on that damn ledge watching it all happen. And they not doing nothing. They intervene with those wildebeest getting their ass ate up trying to cross that body of water. Now, how can your ass be speaking out against the crocodile eating the damn wildebeest and speaking about the wildebeest family, but your ass laying up with a damn crocodile? It just don't make no damn sense at all, though. And again, I'm in a, a hundred percent agreement with the sister Janae. Most definitely, we gotta be for the black family here because historically, it always has been a way to separate the black family, to destroy the black family. In all ways, they've been they have been on a plot and a plan to just destroy us in every way that they can. So to speak out against that and then speak against the speak for the black family and used to lay it with somebody that's not black it's not a great look at all for real King Ajalon no African minds from a sociological point of view I'm going to speak to the situation historically in the mighty kingdoms of Africa on the black kingdoms around the earth were established 6,000 to 70,000 years in past history, which outdates the Europeans and many other new breed people. Our societies were indigenous, they were aboriginal, they were original. Uh, different species that appeared throughout history, that intermingled and interbreed, made a subspecies which made a subculture which gave franchises into the corporate body of, of the different communities of Africans around the earth. Look at it another way. When you produce mixed breed children, it gives the other culture an inroad to lay claims on our drum, on our music, on our, our terror, on the commodities that allow us to trade back and forth, on to land rights. And it totally disenfranchises the indigenous African thought process. It allows another voice uh, to have a say so on our agenda. And it makes our agenda, our community, disingenuous to our cause because there becomes a divide inside the genetics, inside the structure of having a power base that says this is the black community or this is the African community or so-called African American community. It allow other people doing uh, that mating ritual to bring their relatives, whether they're scholars, whether they're business people, whether they're politicians, to the table to help guide the so-called black or African-American or African community in its decision-making, which can be harmful for the production of strong, solid black men and women to have an agenda for their children and for their genetic existence. When we touch into the core realm of what dating 
in speaking about issues to say the black community has done and, and can do. We'll look at ancient Egypt, for example. Uh, the Greek and the Roman and the Persian and the Arab bloodline got to the throne or got into the great house because of this intergreening or uh, this inter uh, racial dating of these uh, mixing species together. And, and now, when you look at Egypt, it is totally in the hands of a foreign occupation, uh, alien people, alien people. But the alien people can say that they got black blood. Even though they have a drop of black blood, they do not do anything for the black agenda or the interests of black people. Um, so I'm going to leave it there, and we can ponder, we can do the research, um, we can look into the archives of time, and as we address this issue, because I was looking, uh, Queen Manisha, on your Facebook, uh, you got over 120 likes. It's a hot topic. A, a lot of people are chiming in on it. Uh, there's different perspectives to look at it, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this to the table. That's just my perspective from a lawyer after my point of view. Yeah, now what I've noticed that a lot of people on here that said that no, the black person should not preach about the improvement of the black community. They just didn't really explain. They just said no, like there was no explanation. But there's a lot more explanation about people who say that, yes, black people should be able to still preach. Like I will read a comment. I'm not going to say the person's name because I don't want to do that. But this comment says, of course, only small people will turn away support and um, advocacy. There were white folks who stood alongside many black folks when some black folks sat on the sidelines and watched. Now, my point of view with this whole topic is, I kind of feel like if a person does choose to marry a white person and they do want to sit up there and still push for the black community to be prosperous. I kind of feel like they can still do that, but they're not going to be on the mic and they can't preach about a strong black family unit when they absolutely don't have one. But what I said on my post is if they want to donate financially, sure, write the check every month. If they want to be in the background, organizing something in the background, sure. Now this lady was talking about, and I actually commented on what she said. Now, um, there is, there are white people in history that have helped us very small percentage. There's more, there's more, there's more of them that have harmed us, hung us, burnt us, uh, cut us up than helped. But there are a small percentage. I took my daughter to the East coast and we visited a mansion in Philly where this guy um, used his mansion to to help over 2,000 slaves get to freedom. It was, it was a white couple from from England. So there there are, but I feel like this, if, if there are white people that are married to black people that do want to help, I feel like they have to show and prove. I teach my daughter that because of the history, and we have to always remember our history because history always repeats itself. So when it comes to white people, and I was taught this way by my parents, especially the white people in California, they will smile in your face and be the nicest to you, invite you over to dinner, be so kind to you. And then you walk, you turn your back and they'll call you all kind of inwards. I've had it happen to me because I had someone that was in the room when this has happened and they were talking about me, but I would never have known that if someone wouldn't have told me that. So I teach my daughter that a white person has to try to earn your trust. You don't give it to them. Like the people in that mansion that helped the slaves. They, to me, they were trustworthy. They really did help them. And they could have lost all of their, their wealth and probably had their house burned down if they were ever caught and they weren't caught. So I'm commenting on this post. Sure, yeah, some white people somewhat get it. They'll never really know how it feels to be treated how we were treated. But some of them, tiny percentage really does. But they have to prove it. They have to prove it. Don't trust them. Just here you go. Trust them. No, prove it. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I, I, me personally, I guess because I'm so militant, 
I look at it like this in my life. Um, no, no white person has ever helped me unless they were getting paid to help me. You understand what I'm saying? Unless it was their job, like I was at a service or something like that. They never volunteered to actually just genuinely help off the good faith of I'm going to help somebody today. You know what I'm saying? Whether I get paid to do it or not. And I had to, I thought about your, um, this topic after you, you know, saying you did it. But, you know, that's not to say it's not good white people. And then again, you have to go back to history somewhat like me there. You know, uh, King Angela said, but some of us just don't, you know, I choose not to integrate. I have biracial family members. My grandmother was biracial, not by choice, but she was biracial. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, my brothers married white women. Uh, my uncle married a white woman. My father was a black panther, and he had him and his brother didn't speak for years because he married a white woman and had children by him. But at the end of the day, it's, it's your own personal choice. You can't help who you fall in love with. I see that as well. Some people are just attracted to who they're attracted to. That's what you want to be about. Be about it. But I don't see you having a valid point in the fight against injustice, you know, for black people. I don't see you having uh, um, a strong platform to stand on when you don't have a strong sister standing beside you. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. You know, that's just not what I see. It's not to say I don't love my family members or not because they're not 100 percent black. I love them all. They still black people. To me, it's just the part that that is embraced is not a part that looks like you. That's not who you are. You don't come from that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and the so thing. How can you relate to that? Really? Yeah, and the thing though, the reason why I posted and I was I was saying what I was saying is because. White people have the option. They have the option. So if they want to be an activist on Monday and stand behind us on Monday, sure. If they want to switch it up and get a divorce and next year they're not married to this black person and then they want to not be an activist, they can do so and they can slip back into the, into, into the world and forget this whole part of their life happened. We cannot forget. We're black every single day. Well, every day we wake up, we remind them that we're black. Every day, we're well, Every day, it's a constant reminder that we're different. It's a constant reminder that, that um, our lives are not as matter as much. It's like, a, um, I don't want to get off topic, but you know we do that sometimes, but the daycare worker that hung the baby got probation and a 12-year-old little boy is facing 10 years in jail for selling CDs. And where's the justice in that? You know? Where where is the where's the line that, that to be crossed or uncrossed to say that your life carries more value than mine, even though you took a life. I'm just trying to make a living. And you took my life. You understand what I'm saying? Or you trying to take my life away from me. That's a constant reminder that you're black. It's a constant reminder that we are you know, in the middle of a war. Like Dr. Khalid Muhammad said. If you don't believe we're in the water, you're the only one that's not fighting. You know what I'm saying? Because every day we get up, we, we remember we in a war. We remember that there's a fight, and we remember that we're losing. Every day, constantly, we're losing. We are the ones that are losing. But there's so much more riding on the day that if we ever get it and we wake up and unify, regardless of if you're married to a white woman or not, or a white men or not, because a lot of the sisters that are married to, to white men, they get, they catch more hell than these brothers out here with white women on their arm. I don't know how many times I've seen guys attacking, so what's her name, Serena Williams, for marrying a white man. She's a bad witch. And, I, and I'm like, now all these brothers out here with these beautiful white women on their arm, they ain't calling them no kind of name. But why you gotta call the sisters out names like that? Because they choose to be with somebody other than a black man. That's not white either. You know what I'm saying? But as far as you being a spokesperson for the black race, 
no, just chill, be happy. You found somebody regardless of race, color, creed. You're not in that. You're not in the race war business. You're not in the revolutionary business. You just live in your life, and you who make you happy. And that's a beautiful thing as well. You know what I'm saying? I don't get mad no more. I used to get upset about it, but it's like for what? That's your choice. You be who you choose to be with. You know what I'm saying? That's what you. That is your choice. But you, we don't need you fighting for us because you're not. At the end of the day, when you go cuddle talk with that white person, whatever y'all discuss, if it ain't about your own white family, it's, it's going to be in, in balance for us. It's going to be beneficial to whichever one, you know, it's going to be beneficial to them, you know. It's not going to be beneficial to us. It's not going to help black people at all. It's not going to help us get out of this situation we in. So, so, go ahead. As a pan Africanist, um, um, and 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 and, and, and for the um, within uh, the integration, black community, integrated black community, marry who you want to, can help you fall in love with. Within the pan African community, you can help you fall in love with. Because uh, you ain't supposed to follow them, supposed to fly them, supposed to run them, supposed to build them. And um, ever since we've been introduced to the concept of love, which is a Greek, a uh, Roman, a uh, European constraint, an uh, ideology that, like friends, does not a true definition. Because in the laws of the African ancient world, we didn't marry or we didn't commit for love. Um, we committed for harm and tranquility and prosperity. Uh, we joined different blood types or different clans or different tribes, right? For unions and contracts. Because we looked into the future, right? Of, of, of our genetic survival, of our economic survival, our cultural survival, our traditions, and our social system. During slavery, we have been given Jesus, we've been given uh, Judaism and Islam. And so everything that we do uh, is not for our survival, it's for a different feel good. Uh, Love, uh, friends. Um, there's no construct to keep the genetic survival of, of who we are uh, moving forward. Uh, in this free for all democracy, so called America, um, you have the freedoms and you have the liberty to do whatever individual chooses to do, and it's all supported. You know, gay, um, you can become super rich and selfish. You can marry whoever you want to. Um, you can have sexual animals. But in a pan Africanist format, right? Thinking about the liberation, thinking about what the ancestors did, you know, the total disregard to the culture, to the heritage, to the legacy um, of building a better tomorrow. On the international platform, on, on the New World Order platform, um, absolutely. You know, get down and continue whoever you want to. It depends. It depends on uh, your social constraint. Uh, when we take it from political education, we take it from political science. This discussion it can be dealt with on so many deeper levels. But as an individual with no thought process towards race or, 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 or what you call uh, alliance to race, solidarity to race, uh, uh, it is not a unifying factor within the community. It is, it is, I'll give you another example. Within the Italian community, uh, the Italian kids can go off to school and they can, you know, turn around. But at the end of the day, what you want is you want the family money. If you want the family money, your family is the Italian money. You know, Italian money is not good for you. You know, you know, I'm not saying no more. You know, and so, even in the Russo tribes, even in the Chinese community, um, when you end up getting banned from having a voice with your community, when you step outside of your cultural and social um, adhesive, you know, you, you, that, 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 that one thing that allows you to look in the mirror and say, hey, I represent Mandigo, I represent Husa, I represent Zogromo, I, I represent, you know, um, but if you're into your own self, you know, it's not about the community. 
They really want to. You know? But once again, on a community format, we're being, we're being, we're being ostracized, we're being economically stripped, we're being feminized, it's being encouraged in all media, right? You see the black woman with the white man, you see the black man with the white woman, you see the black man as a homosexual, or you see the black man in prison, or on some type of drug, or playing some type of sport. There's no images of us having that thought about a black community. And so the black community is in extinction mode. It's not annihilated. It's just being urban centers of suburban lifestyles. And so, let's get into my answer. I want to thank you for moving on and really kept this topic. I hope the listening audience like, subscribe, share, follow. Um, I hope they go to uh, the resources and, 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 and fund you and your endeavors to make sure that we can have future discussions and we can do it uh, in a more technological way. Um, I support your format. Thank you for having me on. To Yajuan, Larry F. Kamal, 707 7746 you can reach me at lordadjuan at gmail.com. That's L-O-R-D-A-N-S-U-B-U at gmail.com. Thanks for having me on the show. Blessings, Queen Janae. Blessings, Deanne Kamaki. Blessings and peace, Queen Marisha. Absolutely. Thank you. And I hope you guys continue this discussion. But I have uh, another... Uh, engagement to take care of right now. All right. Well, thank you for, for sharing tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to being invited to the next discussion. Absolutely. Discussion Absolutely. Have a good night. All right, brother. Peace. One love, brother. So, yeah, we, uh, we have a few more minutes before we have to wrap this up. But, um, let me see if I can go and look, find a few more comments that people wrote. Like I said, most people were for it. That for, that was mean, meaning for it, meaning they're saying that it doesn't matter who your partner is, you should still be able to really, truly support the black community vocally. Oh, no, no, no. You can support but the vocally part, you know, like you just out there leading and then you, what you're speaking to, again, you are walking contradiction to what you're standing for and what you're speaking about. It just don't add up. Again, you, you can support. There's no doubt about that. You know, but as far as trying to be a spokesperson and trying to be, you know, trying to run something, no, 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 you, you skip the whole I have, I have what I'm reading right now on your page, um, my queen, my shit. Um, and they say can they can have an opinion, they can be a part of the work, they can help create dialogue, but will they be trusted to carry on the movement and choose the people over that relationship? And if no, I would put my trust of, of my people in someone who chooses to live their lives with another race. And that's absolutely true, you know. And that's the that's the basis of, of of the whole they defeat the whole purpose of even being a part of a movement, a black power movement, if you with a white person or you, you with somebody I'm and um I'm gonna just let y'all in on a little thing with the new Black Panther Party. If um we will not proceed, this is something that happened over the weekend, if there's a white person in the room. We do not hold meetings in front of white people. We don't invite them to our press conferences. Um, only when we get, uh, I mean, it's, it's not even an exception. That was rule number one when we went to Durham, North Carolina. If there is a white person in the room, don't open your mouth and don't say anything. You don't ever let them give a give, take your podium because they'll speak on your behalf or they'll report back what you said, whether you said it the right way. You said it for your people to understand it. They're going to say it for their people to understand. And you got to understand that they are always and will always be the opposition. They are not our friends. They are not our allies. You know what I'm saying? No matter who they married to, they're not your ally. You know, and I had to tell them that. 
tell some of my white friends that on my other page, they was like, well, we, we, we still friends. I said, and I love you very dearly. Yes, we still friends. That's not how I don't like you, but this is my choice. And it, when it comes down to it, you're going to have to make a choice too. You're going to choose your side or my side. You know what I'm saying? You might be in love with this, this black man, but when it comes down to your life, are you going to choose this black man over your white family? You know what I'm saying? Think about it like that. I'm going to choose my black family. You got to make a choice. Exactly how they think. And, and, and that's the volume. They stay on cold. They stay it's on cold. Uh, exactly. Whether they right or wrong, they stay yes, on cold. Yes, yes. And, and they refuse. And they can, like, it's, the history has gone on and on and on and on and on. White people stick together. No matter if they killing niggas, hanging, you know, hanging people, uh, or whatever. They know they won't. They know they won't. And people still have not done one day in time with over millions of deaths of black people. And they That's know right. that they're guilty of doing it. You know what and I'm just, saying? And just, and just think, too, family, it was millions of deaths. Just think millions of how many of Just think of how many. Look, you can kill a person one time. How many times can you rape a man, woman, child, or an infant? So just think of how much damn rape that it was. We've been through so much damn hell with these damn people. And then, just to help understand a little more in depth, it's always one, two, and a few of their ass that's always so-called damn helping. When they make up a much, much greater percentage than that. But you you never see them collectively come together and look at us like, wait a minute, wait a minute, guys. These are fellow Americans like us. Let's help them for Christ's sake. They won't do that shit for us. In order for them to do that for us, we got to be a damn dog or something, though. They ain't come together like how they do for PETA and all that. But again, they have yet to collectively come together and see us as their equal and do something about it. And again, I know about John Brown and, you know, a few other people who helped Harriet Tubman and all that right there. But damn it, it's always the twos and the damn fuse. And again, they make up a much greater percentage than that. And that just speak to the volumes of this system that we live in up under this white supremacy and racism. Because they have yet to come together and stand in solidarity with us and check their own damn white relatives, cousins, uncles, aunties, all of them, you know, uncles. All them white folks that they be seeing that be niggering it up and they just be on the sideline cracking up, cracking jokes right along with their ass. You know what I mean? You 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 may find a few that probably speak up and out against it, but again, that, that damn few don't mean a damn thing, period. Well, what I always think in my head, and, I, and I'm and also the pyramid, I have dated white men. I have. And I think that back in back in in my dating history. And also, um, when I see other black people dating white men, what I think in my head, and I've never asked any, any of the men that I have dated this question, but I was I'm wondering if I would have ever turned to them or if any black person would ever turn to their, their, their partner who's white and say, if they, if they start hanging us tomorrow, would you hang in the tree next to me? Would you? That's a great question. That's, that's an awesome question. This is coming out yeah. of this hanging that we went through over the weekend. Yeah. Where, you know, that's, that, that is a good question to ask. You know, yeah. and I, like I say, I, in high school, I tried to date a white guy. It's just not for me. You know what I'm saying? It was just it was too much of a cultural difference. It was too much, and then my dad would have killed me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, my dad would not have let that ride if he knew I actually went out with a with a white guy at one point. You know, but that was um, neither here nor there. But I mean, it ended up. It, the more you get into consciousness, and uh, you begin to understand the vibrations. In the pool, in the energy. Like, have you ever been in a room full of white people and when you got out of that room, you were totally exhausted? Uh. Have you ever done that? Like, I guess, I mean, you think about it. Just, I worked with them constantly. I was the only black person in the office. And every day, I have been, you know, as I, as I grew more conscious and aware of energy and 
vibrations and things like that. I noticed that they, that I would be more, I wouldn't be enlightened by their presence. I would be more drained by it. Like they were feeding off of me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Feeding vibe. off of my energy or my, uh, my pool, you know, my, my, my vibrational pools and things like that. So that's why I'm, I'm very weary. In I'm, I'm weary of some black people. Some black people are energy, black, black energy vampires. Yes. But when you understand the nature of the beast, and and, and, and I say that in, in the most mysterious way, the nature of the beast is just anybody that's out to destroy you. You, they, they will do it uh, unintentionally do it you know what I'm saying just because they programmed it to do this type of thing I can't even I mean I, like I say you, you can love who you want to love but intentionally to wait wait I'm on radio um, intentionally to just be involved with a white person I can't do it I can't do it personally. I, I feel like I will be totally drained of my good energy, my good vibration. I have to burn sage every day. And, you know what I'm saying? And this, 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 just to pull the pull back from my ancestors, what I know is real. Because I can go to a meeting and come home and I'm just like, my God, what happened? You know, it's just too much. And then back to the rape, right, back to the rape right part of it too. Me, you know, I, I can understand how your father felt about you dealing with a white male you know, because again, once you connected to the history of your people, you can't help but think about all the different times our ass was raped and raped. Right. You know, white women crying, crying out rape and all this different, you know, fake crying, you know, false false accusations and all that shit that happened to us and got our ass right. killed. So when can let a white woman get, will get your kid? When can let a white woman get your kid? Yes. They had laughing barrels and, and, uh, in South Carolina when you couldn't even get caught laughing on the street. And exactly. And you didn't even laugh anymore to laugh. Exactly. Because white folks think you, why you laughing at them. Can't look them in the eye they'll kill you, hang you up from a tree. That's right. You know what I'm way you too know, damn much, for real. Right. And every time, you know, something happened to a young mother, that's why we went to Ulta Girl. Because we had got, we had, you know, there was a lot of stories going around, but nobody really knew the boy. And they were saying he went with a white girl, and um, she was a sheriff deputy's daughter, and they didn't like the fact that they were dating, and you know, it was all kind of rumors going on my house. So we went to go investigate. You know what I'm saying? Now we got an open investigation with um the department, uh, the drug police department. And they police chap captain is a black lady. But she didn't even know nothing about me hanging. Can you tell me what's going on, you know? She act like her ass didn't know. They know every damn right. thing that come in, though. But again... That's the same thing with, like, with the Botham John case out mm-hmm. there, and you know, uh, out there in Dallas, that would be, look the same scenario. You know, we got the, the chief of police black, and you know, like I say, anytime we get in those positions, we just in those positions to kiss you white ass, ass mm-hmm. straight up, because you ain't gonna do a damn thing to help your damn people, even the Rangers, the Texas Rangers, who the, it was, uh, uh, I guess the case was supposedly turned over to. Them some brothers that were, you know, some black Texas Rangers. Again, that that don't uh, want your ass put that damn uniform on. You no longer who the hell you are. You are part of that evil ass system, whether it's the Fraternal Order of Police or any other type of white supremacist organization. Your ass gonna be a part of that blue, and that blue represents straight damn white. Well, you guys, we are out of time. We are absolutely out of time. This is a great topic. Um, people that are listening, please comment. Let us know what you think. If you have any suggestions for the next topic, please let us know. Uh, this is Queens of Queens Radio, Kings of Queens discussion group, and I'm Queen Maisha. And please reintroduce yourselves before we get off of um, off the phone. All right, this is Queen Janae of the Waker Foundation. Miss Waker. 
W-A-K-E-R, foundation.me. You can reach me in Washington, D.C. at 202-867-3200. I'm a radio personality. Um, got a trip to Africa coming up in July with the Waker Foundation. Looking for some investors. So just be on the lookout for an investment call as well from the Waker Foundation to that. Got those diamonds and the gold vines in Africa. Okay? okay? This is the damn Kamati. I appreciate once again, always, Maisha, I appreciate this is a great topic. Mm-hmm. And to all the listeners, I hope you all learned something. This is not anything against whites. It's just something for us as far as us standing in solidarity with one another and getting all stuff together collectively and I can be reached on Instagram D-E-B-A-N-7-24 once again D-E-D-A-N-7-24 on Instagram I appreciate all you ladies Thank you. Have a a blessed night and a blessed life as well. Thank you. So if anyone wants to look at our past um, um, interviews or discussions, please go to Queens of Queens on YouTube and Facebook. It's spelled a little different. It's Q-U-E-E-N-Z of Q-U-E-E-N-Z. And I'm going to kind of follow up what you said, uh, D-Dan Kamati. This is not... The discussions that we do is not for the hatred of white people. It's to empower our people. It's to give them something, give us something that was taken from us, hidden from us. We are, we would like to see our people be prosperous and, and somehow, uh, just destroy all the stereotypes that the world has put on us so this is for the love of our black people not for the hatred of white people hate takes too much energy yes it does so thank you everyone for listening queen maisha here and please listen for our next discussion have a good night bye-bye that's right good night everybody